Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we continue our work on the Yaesu Sommerkamp FT221 Romeo. We have seen in the part 1, the first part, that there has, have been made some modifications. Today we will start to rebuild the last modification, it's the AGZ and RF gain circuit. So let's start. There was not only the RF pot which was removed or used for another purpose. We also have here on the connection of the SSB IF part three wires which have been pinched off. Additionally a bridge is installed and this resistor. 470 ohms this resistor is there to replace the pot and this wire from here to here indicates the setting of the RF pot for maximum gain. The RF pot is set to maximum gain fully clockwise. And this means we have here the pot from here to here and this is a wiper which is in case of full amplification, full RF gain connected to this pin. And in case of minimum gain this uh, wiper connection is connected to there. You can see it in the in the man in the schematic we talked about it we have here the wiper which is this one rf variable and here we have the two connections of the of the pot the resistor is from sorry the resistor is from here to here and this is connected to the wiper this is a bridge from here to here 23 24 so I have to uh, reconnect the pot. Meanwhile, the pot is installed to these three wires according to the schematic. The wiring of the RF game pot is done. The front plate is cleaned. All knobs are cleaned, installed. And now the function of the RF gain is okay. In USB. Sorry. discriminator. It works now as it should on the clockwise position it's maximum gain and you, you can hear the, the volume of the noise decreases in the speaker. It has to be calibrated. But I cannot receive a signal. The marker should generate uh, signal every 100 kilohertz. There's a noise, but it's not the marker. I mean, the range 100 or zero. The next 100, nothing happens. Mode VFO. Transmit it. It seems to be okay. There's an output signal in AM and in FM. I will measure the power. Okay, 20 watt full scale in FM. We have nearly 20 watt AM. Power is a little bit less, only some watts. That's okay, the carrier. And in USB, the Seller told me that there's a problem. Okay, contact problem. LSB is okay. In general, transmit path seems to work, but the RX is deaf. I will check it with a signal generator. I'm measuring the output frequency on the counter of the HP8640. It's 140. 5.0 okay but i found that this pot in the pll you remember there was a rf gain pot modified and wired in parallel is very sensitive very touchy maybe it is bad or similar for the ah, 46 
should be 45.5 and 499 maybe this pot is bad 45.5 but now I can try to uh, receive again the signal generator still no reception no chance marker is not received there is something wrong i think the pnl unit does not work as it should between rx and tx so there is something to be done i got the receive part working there was another uh, trace interrupted in the rf board where we had the uh, missing resistor and the modification and the one of the supply lines was also interrupted to adapt it to the modification i've ever seen it because the <coughs> the cut in the trace was exactly underneath a another wire the coax wires so it was difficult to see but now it works i can show it we have receive and now the marker lsb usb And an FM, we also have it. Scratch works. So obviously, it's now okay. <coughs> and the RF gain is also good. When I reduce the gain, we are fully clockwise. And the signal disappears. It's the attenuation of the uh, RF board and later the AGC is, uh, is influenced. That's also working. <coughs> you may ask how I managed it to replace the 500 ohm pot with a 1 kilo ohm pot. Let's have a look into the, <coughs> into the schematic. Sorry. We have here the 500 ohm pot for the RF gain in the RF input, that's the antenna connection, the first transistor, and here we have the pot which reduces the current through the transistor and reduces the gain. This pot I replaced by one kilo ohm pot and another kilo ohm in parallel. So the characteristic is not exactly like a 500 ohm pot, because a 500 ohm pot is linear, and when we have a 1k pot which varies from 0 to 1 kilo ohm and parallel 1 kilo ohm, fixed resistor, then we do not have the exact same characteristic as a pot with 0 to 500 ohms. But I think it is not relevant in this case, and uh, we can live with it, and it's always a good idea to reduce the amplifier or amplification in the first stage to uh, reduce the load of the first mixer, because here we have the mixer, with this transistor, the signal comes in, and here in the source circuit, the oscillator is fed in, the VCO or first LO is fed in and such a simple mixer is rather mm, sensitive against overloading. So it's a good idea to reduce when we reduce the RF gain to reduce this gain of this uh, transistor considerably not only to reduce the AGC, the AGC comes in here where this pin, but we should also reduce the uh, gain by reducing the current with this pot. This is the part for the um, RF, for the RX RF. And here we have the second pot. The original pot is 500 ohms between this and this pin. And the wiper feeds in a voltage. This path here through these two diodes. And then we have 470K in series. And this is a Darlington configuration. So the input impedance at the wiper here is very, very high. <coughs> Sorry, at the wiper here is very high. It is much, much higher than one kilo ohm or 500 ohms. So it is not a problem when we have instead of 500 ohms, a pot with a one kilo ohm source impedance. We only have to look for these two setting, uh, setting resistors, trim resistors. They are designed for a 500 ohm pot in series. 
So I used a one kilo ohm pot and added here also one kilo ohm in parallel. So we have here seen from these two trim pots <coughs> a 500 ohm pot. And when we look into the pot here from the load side, we have here okay, it is more or less a one kilo ohm pot, but again, the input impedance here is extremely high. By the way, we have here an interesting uh, detail. When the uh, RF gain is maximum, we have here a high voltage and these two diodes are conductive. And then this circuit here, it's the intermediate frequency, is fully tuned because we have here capacitor to ground and then this diode is, is also conductive. And when we reduce the gain, this diode gets less conductive and this circuit is a little bit detuned. And therefore it has less gain because the Q factor decreases in this case. Well, so we have seen that it is possible to replace the 500 ohm pot by a 1 kilo ohm pot with, I would say, nearly no ef negative effect. And this can be tolerated. Again, I couldn't get a 500, pot, 500 ohm pot on the market at a reasonable price. And now a short receiver test. The input signal is 0 0.3 microvolt. We can hear it. AM and FM. I will try now to check the FM modulation. So this is an FM signal modulated, 3 kHz deviation. It's 1 microvolt. Okay, the bandwidth of the receiver is rather big. It's minus 7, minus 8 kilohertz up to plus 10 bandwidth is a little bit more than 15 kilohertz okay mm -hmm. not state of the art today especially when I think to uh, repeat this with a shift with a uh, spacing of 12.5 kilohertz for the old 25 kilohertz uh, raster it's okay but not for the newer ones which are only 12.5 kilohertz away the FM filter is a little bit hmm, okay. Not the optimum. And now the AM. It's rather narrow. It's 3 kilohertz. And another one, it's 4 kilohertz. Okay. Maybe it's the SSB filter. I don't know the concept. I have to look into the concept. But that's not the topic in the moment. The receive part works, that's important. Now we can focus on the next problems. Maybe you can see it. I replaced the incandescent bulbs by white LEDs. I reduced the current. They have nominal 20 milliamps. I'm driving them with 10 milliamps. That's okay. It's not so good when we have a bright display, but this is not controlled. This is the pilot lamp which should be on when the PLL works. The PLL in the moment is locked. And the output of the PLL should then switch on this LED, but it doesn't. So we have to look into the PLL circuit. This is the next uh, problem. Yes, this transceiver is a real rabbit hole. There are so many things not okay, modified, and this seems to be bad. I take out the PLL unit and have a look at it. The um, PLL board seems to have more than one problem. For example, the output of the PLL. The PLL is locked in the moment. We can hear the marker. Clear signal, PLL is locked. Now the S meter is lit, but only because I made a short in the output and connected the pin to ground, which should be made by the a PLL board. When I take it out, it's difficult to see, but the light goes off, and this means that the output transistor, which should switch the LED on one side to ground, the cathode to ground <coughs> via resistor, does not work. So obviously we have some problems in the board, and I will take it out. 
I've taken out this transistor and measured uh, suspicious values in the board. VBE base emitter was a little bit high, much higher than expected. And I connected it to my checker and see what it is testing. Uh, if it's not good, not a diode. It's measuring perfect. Forward voltage 1.2 volt, uh -huh. but we have an HFE of 20.8K, 20 20,000. Well, it's a Darlington. Therefore, we have 1.2 volts. That's what I've measured inside. That didn't realize that it is a Darlington. It was not shown as a Darlington here in the diagram. This is only a, a standard transistor. But we have here 100K in series. And 100K does not supply enough voltage for a simple transistor. So only in case of a Darlington type, we have here sufficient uh, gain of this transistor. So the transistor is okay. And I will bring it back into the circuit. I tried to get running the pilot lamp indication in the S meter when the PLL is locked. This transistor, we checked it, should be conductive, switched to ground. And then the pilot lamp, I replaced it by an LED, should react, but nothing happens. Then I had a more thorough look at the transistor and the wiring. And I found that there are different versions of this board are, um, I think, on the market or have been installed depending whether it's an FT221 or FT221R. And we have here the version R. The version R would require this one. But the board I have, this board here, is a different version. And the schematic for this different version is like this. And we can easily see that this transistor, the same transistor, is operated as an emitter follower. And pin 7 to the flicker indicating lamp, S meter, is in the emitter connected and not in the collector as before. And when we have 0.6, we need the input of the power supply for the collector, of course, for the emitter follower, and it's the power supply also for this IC. And this IC pin 7 has no power supply in this transceiver. And when we have a look into the, sorry, into the wiring harness, we see here one, two, three, four, five, pin six has no connection. It is not used. There was never sold on it. So we have here missing 13.8 volt. Pin 6, sorry, pin 6 here is not, not supplied. Therefore, the output cannot operate in this transceiver with this board. This board here is not the original board for this transceiver. Well, what to do? I think it's rather easy when we look into the schematic of the FTT21. Without R, we can see that the pilot lamp 3 is connected to ground on one side and the output is here connected to pin 7. Here is the emitter follower expected as we have here on this board and pin 6 is connected to 13.8 volt. So I have to rewire this pin 6 for 13.8 volt and have to invert the connection of the pilot lamp 
not connected to plus on one side, I have connected to ground. That's what I will do. I did some modification in the uh, transceiver as described. Additionally, I swapped two components in the uh, PLL board, this trim pot, which was a very bad one, you remember. I swapped it by, by this one, which looks much more professional and it is protected. As long as I don't touch it, it's protected. And I swapped this capacitor, it was a tantalum cap, which is close to the tuning diode. 100k and this um, tantalum cap is coupled to the uh, DC line for tuning with 2.2 kilo ohms. I take it out. It is connected to the circuit where the unlock condition is dis uh, discovered. But it was okay. I swapped it by a, a high quality foil capacitor. This little red one you can see here. 100 nanofarad. I'm a little bit surprised why they used a, a tantalum cup here. For this purpose it's only a DC application and low frequency when there are some oscillations on it. Uh, a foil cap or even a ceramic cap would be okay for this purpose, 100 nanofarad. Well, that's what it did. Let's try and check it. Now first check. The PLL is locked. And when I unlock the PLL with my screwdriver and the pot we have installed, you see what happens. Unlocked. Locked. As it should be. Now we are at the end of part two of our project with the FT221R. There is still some work to be done to check the electrolytics, especially in the power supply, to clean the contacts, the mode switch <coughs> makes some trouble, maybe some of the pots also and other switches, these small switches here. And of course a realignment. There are so many modifications inside and the the versions are not clear, uh, a swapped board of the PLL loop, mods and so on. I don't know the history of this transceiver and I, I can't dig or dive deeper into this topic and I don't want to do it. Makes no sense, it is as it is, but my opinion is a complete realignment is necessary especially for those components which have obviously been tampered with. For example, the, the setting of the VCO voltages, there is a switching of tuning voltages for very caps and I have seen that the switch is not uh, tuning or changing this voltage linearly. There are some jumps in this voltage. Again, this is then part of part three. Part two is now finished. Stay healthy. Stay tuned, see you on this channel.